All Right Content Coalition family. In this episode, I have Kaylin White, the head marketing buff at WP Buffs. We actually interviewed Joe, her head honcho over there uh, not too long ago. But this episode is a lot of fun. We talk a lot about like wellness and well-being in business, but we do talk content marketing. And some of the main points that I'm really excited about would be at about 11 and a half minutes, she talks about um, making your sales and your marketing more customer centric and basically how that's going to change the game in the effectiveness of both of those things. At about 15 and a half minutes, she talks about the number one thing holding your business back from massive success in your content marketing strategy. And then at 19 minutes, and I love these, um, she's going to give you one thing to implement in the next 48 hours to get clear goals, to declutter your systems, and to say adios muchachos to terrible habits. So I have to tell you, there's a little bit of an audio issue on this one. I'm so sorry we had a mic problem, but bear with it because the content is awesome and you will definitely, definitely enjoy it. I'm Shayna. I love dogs, I trip a lot, and I happen to have a knack for making pretty sweet videos for businesses. But the more videos we made, the more questions I got about how video and other content can be leveraged to make a bigger impact in their marketing. I mean, 44% of marketers say that producing content is their biggest challenge, yet content marketing is 62% less expensive than outbound and produces three times more leads. Now, I know a lot, but I certainly don't know it all, so I made it my mission to talk with content kings, queens, and bosses to learn as much as I could about crushing content marketing, and I'm taking you along with me. Welcome to the Content Coalition. Hello, Content Coalition. Welcome to another episode. And uh, today I am here with Kaylin White of WP Buffs. We chatted with her head honcho, Joe. And, you know, we didn't want to leave Kaylin out because she's super cool also. Like, it, the whole crew over there is super cool. These two I got a chance to, fit, to like, actually meet. And I'm so excited because she heads up all of their marketing efforts. It's funny because um, we send up all of our guests, like, tell us what you want your bio to say. And this list is incredible. I'm just going to read it because there's no way I'm going to like pretend to wing this. So marketing and growth manager, influencer outreach specialist, energy enthusiast. I'm going to swing back to that because I'm curious to see what that is. Sales girl, avid artist, life lover, public relations guru, WordPress buff, organic Italian, high five, <laughs> same Z's, um, organizer of chaos, amateur life coach, <laughs> aren't we all? Um, Semi-professional gamer, smile generator, sunshine sucker, and lover of all things creative. I think that's a pretty sweet <laughs> list. Is that that's a large large resume card? I should put out to the world, I think. You must have a really large business card um, yes. to fit yeah. all of that on there. What is uh, energy yeah, enthusiast? Yeah. Energy enthusiast, what's that one? So what does that mean to you? Oh my goodness. Yes. So I would say that, and I oftentimes get this even from my own teammates that I think the energy sort of that we put out, we get back. And so working on that daily is not easy. You know, it's, a, it's one of those things where if I am depleted of energy and I'm not sort of centering my chi, not to get too hipster earth girl, but um, <laughs> if I don't center my own energy, I can't give it out and I can't produce and I can't sell and I can't market. And so when people always, always ask me, how do you maintain such an energetic lifestyle and all this stuff? It's like, literally lists of things I have to do on a daily basis. It's not just like I wake up and I'm like, yeah, let's take on the world. It's legit a lot of work. And so I've kind of got it down to a science and I share it with the people that want to get energized. That's awesome. So let's dive into some content fun stuff. Um, so, well, we I, literally, your first question was how do I balance a high volume sales career mentally and emotionally? And that, I think we segue pretty well. I think we that. nailed it. I think we nailed it. Yeah. Um, stress, yeah. The, the stress of being sort of fast paced was was new, but it was like kind of fun and exciting. You know, it was like, oh my gosh, like all of these, uh, these fun deal with it. But then all of a sudden it was like, whoa, I have a lot to deal with. I have to make sure I keep up physically and mentally so that I don't power down um, because I don't have time. Right, right. Um, and so um, for those people who have not seen Joe's episode and have no idea what WP yes. Buffs does, can we give the, the super yeah. abridged version of what you guys do and why you're so awesome? Yeah, we can talk about them and stop talking about me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> WP Buffs, uh, uh, such an awesome company, 24-7 uh, oh, WordPress, uh, maintenance, support, optimization, uh, such a cool team. Honestly, I have uh, never worked with 
cooler people. Um, we're remote, we're global, we're all over the world. And um, Joe Howard, the head buff, is just a, a wonderful entrepreneur and business-minded individual. I'm learning from him every day. Uh, it is just so amazing to not only learn about WordPress, but also the community. I don't know if you tapped into WordPress a little bit, but I was seriously thinking that going to some of these events and learning about it, that they were going to be these nerds that didn't talk like sitting, you know, and just like, and they are not at all. They are like the coolest people I've ever met. Um, I'm forging these relationships. The first time I met my team in real life, it was like getting together with a high school reunion people from years ago. It was just a, such a natural, uh, good vibe that, um, I love how they attract that through clients and partnerships and all these fun things. Uh, they are just my kind of people. So all of them are positive thinking people too. And it was just like the world was like, nope, you guys are going to go together right now and we're good. So, uh, so how long have you been with WP Best? Um, almost a year now. It feels like way longer. Uh, but yeah, so they found me last year. Uh, and uh, as soon as I interviewed with Joe, it was just kind of like, we ended up talking way longer than we should. And it was just like this, this awesome kind of back and forth. And I just kind of knew it was just like, wow, I really want to see this company go, get to the next level. They were already huge when I came on board. I mean, they were really rocking the space and my job to come in was just to level it up and to see how far we can take it. And that's still, you know, on the daily, like we're just like migrating in such these such amazing ways that uh, I'm just excited to be a part of it. Um, I was really geeking out at, at learning uh, the whole WordPress space too, because I was, I was like an intro person where I was like, I could set up a site and then put a template in there and make a picture, make it pretty. Yeah. Right. Like normal people. And I'm like learning code now and like, learning. I know I was like, Oh my gosh, I know where things go. So uh, it's really, really good for my personal knowledge too. Which is nice. Awesome. So obviously being in the WordPress space, like there are constant updates and having to keep up with like what's going on in tech in general. Um, I, I assume that that same mentality has to shift into marketing. Yeah. Yeah. So like, what do you, that seems like an overwhelming task to stay totally up to trend on everything that's going on. Like how, <laughs> first of yeah. all, do you do that? I'm assuming, right. but like, you know, and then how do you do that? What are some of the things that you make sure that you consistently are doing to keep up with what's going on. Yeah, in great, great question. Uh, right now, as we're speaking, it's probably changing and I'm missing out on something literally <laughs> right now. Right. Um, so a couple things that we do. Well, first Joe has uh, gotten me a WP 101, I believe is the course. Um, so I started there and I was so excited because I actually in the course already. So I started there and I started just learning about the basics of WordPress and how to manage it um, from the back end. Um, so I'm kind of slowly going through those courses. Um, also, we go to WordCamps, which I'm sure he mentioned. Um, WordCamps are awesome where you actually get to kind of learn about the people and what they do and all of the different moving parts. Um, and also we are kind of in cahoots with the dev team of WordPress. So like our COO, Nick is awesome. And he just kind of always is learning about what they're doing behind the scenes, a little bit about the updates that are coming. And, you know, like when Gutenberg blew up the world and all of the things <laughs> that happened there, we were like ready for it and really learning about it. Um, and I also just kind of take my time and read articles and listen to podcasts. I actually learned a lot from the WP MRR podcast, which is Joe's and, uh, enjoy just kind of learning about the people behind the scenes. But to me as a marketer, it was like, if I don't stay on top of this, I'm not doing my job. So it was like, I'm constantly reading articles and being in the WordPress space. There's like probably 25 or so WordPress news sources on Twitter that I follow. It's like a never, end. it could be a full-time job just keeping up with the news itself, right. <laughs> um, but it's fun stuff. Uh, and it's all moving in a, in a really positive direction. I personally feel like WordPress is going to take over the world. I mean, it's going to be, I mean, I, I cannot think of a better, you know, website platform CSS that's, that's better. Um, so it, it makes sense that they're always evolving. I just think they don't realize all the ripple effects that they affect when they update or when they do things. It's very, uh, it very much affects like the whole community. And so, you know, learning about it is like a one step forward, you know, and then you're like, okay, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll learn more tomorrow. And by tomorrow it's already 10 more things. Um, so yeah, I think being social is a big part of it too. I think just being in the social community. I mean, my Twitter tab is always open. My Facebook is always kind of open. Um, and 
a lot of our team members will just like literally put news and updates in Slack. And so I just read those articles and, and stay up to date. But I feel like I'm 90% there uh, most of the time. Um, sometimes we're, we're even ahead of the curve and we can send out news to our clients, which is nice too. So I yeah. like to keep them up to date. That's awesome. Yeah. So then the same question essentially, but swinging into like, marketing. So how do you stay up to date on all the new trends there? Because obviously you have to relay all the new info, right? And yeah. also you need to speak to this crowd in the yeah. same language. Um, but then also it just sounds like a, a crazy job to be keeping up with the tech and then keeping up with marketing trends too. So where are you going? What are you doing to stay up on marketing? Yeah. So this is like 12 years in the making for me. Like I started marketing when literally you were knocking on doors and like you had a pamphlet and a flyer, and probably like a poster board of things you handmade with glue sticks and stuff. So this is like sort of where I started. And now 12 years later, it's so digital and so in your face that literally from one day to the next, you could be doing the wrong thing and still be stuck in your comfort zone. So, you know, a lot of what I do and a lot of my education comes from actually HubSpot. I, I, I know we're a big fan um, and they have these amazing uh, certifications and at their academy. And so I started there even now, I think maybe six or seven years ago where I just <clears throat> started doing email certification courses, content marketing certification courses, and I would learn and pick up gems and things and say, as a human and as a consumer, I would like that for me. And so oh, I would say to myself, okay, now that doesn't work. I, you know, that I wouldn't do, or, okay, that might work where I could actually get in their inbox or, you know, a pop-up might work, or, you know, maybe I'm, you know, introducing some, something new in a newsletter. But I always ask myself, if it, if it doesn't work on me and I'm pretty savvy, although, you know, like getting through a marketer's mind is different than a regular person's mind, you know, is it really sort of the right path we want to take? And I'm talking to Joe and the team literally now about changing the mindset from customer ready or, you know, talking about myself and sort of a PR style to literally being customer centric and thinking in their mind. And so I oftentimes will just kind of read articles from anything, Inc, Mashable, and just see, you know, the success that some of these awesome entrepreneurs have had. And it's literally every time it's the same process where they're not talking about themselves. Right. They're talking about them. They're talking about their customers all the time. So all of our email marketing is, is what is your problem and how can we solve you? And what's your WordPress site? Like, not like, Hey, we do 24 seven service and we're always here for you. And we, 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 and we're awesome. It's not like that anymore. People don't want to hear you talk about yourselves anymore. Right. It's like, I always equate this to your best friend. When you're talking to your best friend, you're telling her a story and she goes, Oh, well, wait, I have a story that tops that. And you're like, wait, 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 I was talking about me. You want to talk about me for a minute. Right. <laughs> That's how I equate marketing and like digital mindset is just, you cannot think about what you can do for them. You have to think about what they need and not even in like a pain point kind of way, not like no. you're going to die with our services. It's more like, you know, I care about you as a person and your website and I want to see you thrive. And the way that I come across in my, all of my sales calls, which we do zoom video calls just like this. And I look them in the eye. And as soon as they start talking about our services, I actually will kind of like turn it around on them and say even more about them and how, like, what's their website and what's their passion. And as soon as I understand their story, that's to me, marketing and sales, like accomplishment. Like if you can get, if you can pull out someone's like really heartfelt story behind their website and why they want to see it grow you want to help them, not the website. Like you want to help the person behind it. And so all of my marketing and all of my mindset and learning is always about the person. So it's like, that's the way it's been since, gosh, I started this whole journey. Uh, and it's gotten me pretty far because I think people see it. You know, I think people say, you know, like she's not just trying to get the sales number in. She's not just trying to hit a quota, you know, like she kind of actually is really, you know, interested in me, you know, she, learned my name and she understands my, you know, my whole story. And I think that that's, I think if you can stick to that with marketing and sales, you can learn about the different avenues and go social and do email marketing. But if you are not really about the person, you're not going to, you're going to suck at it. <laughs> right. Well, and you know, it's funny when I, I did a lot of video production for businesses and strategy and everybody would come to me being like, I need this video about how awesome we are. I need this other video about how cool we are. And I would get to a point where I'm like, stop, just stop it. Nobody yeah. cares. 
Like what kind of content are you going to give them that they're going to be interested in that will then get them to a place where they do want to learn a little bit right. about you. They yeah. don't care about you. Don't just hit them in the exactly. face on Facebook with an ad talking about how awesome you are. Nobody cares. Knock it off. So yeah. if you can, I, I love that that's your, your main go-to is just making sure that you are like serving the people who you want to be in your community using your service because ultimately yeah. like in any business, you should be providing something that helps people yeah. in their business, their life, whatever. And you should be passionate about that. And if that's the case, then you need to invest in who the people are that yeah. are, that you're trying to cater to and like provide something valuable to. So that's so it. And, and I think content obviously is, is king right now, but it's saturated. And so I, I look at these, some of these blogs that people write which is adorable. And they talk about themselves. And they, the first thing they say is me, me, me. And I just, you tune out. And then you think about the things that you personally share on your pages, right? So the things that make Shana happy and like, why do you share them? Maybe it's a dog video falling over, or maybe it's a military story that makes you cry. Like whatever it is, you feel it right here. You fit, you felt it. That's why you shared it. You didn't share it because you're you want to support that or you want to do this. You, you shared it because you felt something and the emotion behind that is literally marketing and sales 101 like that literally is like some people just can't they can't really get to that point ever and they just feel like automating things and consistency is key but content should really be about the value that you can bring and the emotion you can evoke from it you know like we're, it's literally 2019 where anyone can make a blog and put it out there and you really shouldn't you should have this awesome like end goal in mind of reaching these people and bringing value to their lives, not just kind of selling your own product. That's what press releases are for. You know, like right. if you have an award you won, yeah, give it to a press release. But if you want content out there, that's really going to resonate with people, you have to talk about the people and what they want and, and really truly like think about and, and things like it makes me think of Buzzfeed, right? Buzzfeed. So fun. They're so, so exciting. Fun. And they just bring out the most random things like emojis that are running around. Like I love it. Um, and it's because it's fun and exciting. And that's one of the things I love about WP Buffs is when I started marketing with them, they allowed me to be me. They allowed me in to be able to put emojis in my, in my emails and, and respond with gifts and like yes. you know, use a video of myself, like making fun of myself. I was like, yes. And the more I did it, I was like, Joe, are you sure? Are you sure I'm allowed to do this? You know? And he was like, yeah, keep going, keep going. And it was just like, you gotta be kidding me. I'm allowed to be me for the first time in my career ever. So and I'm telling, I've been through, I don't know, you know, t tons of jobs where it was like, got to act a certain way. You got to be a certain way. You cannot be yourself. You got to represent the company. And it was like, finally, I had someone that said, you be your crazy Kaylin self and you're going to get more sales. And it's totally working. That's awesome. I love <laughs> that. That's why I liked your whole MO. The very first time I met you, your realness shines through, you know, people love that. Thank so. you. I appreciate it. I'm kind of, you get to a place in life where you're just like, Oh God, if I can't just be me, then what's the point? What and is the point? I had to, sh I shed that a few like years ago and I was like, well, it is what it is and it's obnoxious. So if you <laughs> like it great and if not, then well, I'm sorry. Exactly. Not really, not really sorry, actually. Take, Take it or leave it. Not sorry. Yep. <laughs> exactly. All right. Yeah. So, um, lastly, I want to, one thing we ask everybody, I ask everybody is, um, to give one implementable action item that somebody can do in the next 48 hours after listening to this. Um, it can be anything. This can be like wellness. It can be content, um, whatever you want, but it doesn't, it has to not require them to have like a team of 30 people or like <laughs> spend a billion dollars. Okay. Free and by yourself. Got it. So, so, um, okay. Well, I would say, uh, it's time to stop and evaluate two things. You need to evaluate what you truly want as like an end goal. Some people are just kind of going and they don't really know what they want. Like I have this literal vision board, it's here, of the things that I want. And I literally checked things off of that board that I've gotten already. It was like, I didn't even realize I was still working towards it, but it's there. So I think if you have a goal in mind, literally write it down. So that would be like number one. And number two, evaluate your own habits and see where the negative is creeping in. So if you don't realize that, say <clears throat> you wake up and the first thing you do is complain, you need to rewire your brain to say, it's before my feet hit the ground, I'm saying thank you for the day. And if you are 
doing other kind of unhealthy habits where you know it can be infectious in your life, like, I don't know, partying too much or not getting enough sleep or eating 19 cheeseburgers, change it. Don't just say you're going to change it, yeah. change it so that you can actually be the best you. So evaluate your goals and evaluate your negative side. And I think you might do little tiny things that will kind of weave a big picture for the future. That's amazing. Great advice. Have you, do you have Darren Hardy's living your best year ever? I do. Okay, I use it too. Cause I'm like, it's like right here. See? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we have, yes. We have, we have that one and the Pomodoro uh, uh, planner is just the same. Those are cool. both great. Yes. I'm going to, you know, we're going to throw links below to those because this yes. journal changed my life. Like it, it is, it teaches you how to implement habits, like good yes. habits that will take you towards those goals. And it breaks down yes. your year into quarters, months, and this, you know, it's, yep. it's incredible. Have an accountability partner though, because you can make excuses for yourself all day long. Okay. <laughs> I've learned I, that. I agree. Yes. And it, you want to know what else I love about it is it takes you out of the digital world for just a second. And it yes. literally has you use a pen and a paper, like, yeah. I <laughs> like I kind of love that it's not just a digital calendar with a reminder and a pop-up and a thing. Like sometimes we get, we get overwhelmed by those things, but literally a physical piece of paper and pencil sometimes can still be very, very helpful. So I love that for sure. I love it too. Awesome. Very cool. Well, Kaylin, thank you so much for, be, for spending some time. You're awesome. I love hanging out with you thank via you, digital you resources. So hopefully some of my good positive vibes will it did, it did. In the um, world. <laughs> Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you. And thank you everybody watching and listening. And um, we will see everybody next week. Yay. Bye. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of the Content Coalition. Now, whether you're listening or watching, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and to whatever platform you're listening to it on, because you're not going to want to miss out on the incredible things that I'm learning with these amazing content marketing pros. So make sure you subscribe and we will talk to you next week.